Welcome to Ham News. I'm Sarah Jackson, and today we'll be reporting on amateur radio as a community service, the use of two-meter handheld radios, and a ham radio setup. To begin with, let's describe with what amateur radio is. The FCC, or Federal Communications Commission, defines amateur radio as a, quote, radio communication service for the purpose of self-training, intercommunication, and technical investigations carried out by amateurs, that is, duly authorized persons interested in radio technique solely for a personal aim and without pecuniary interest, which means a hobby devoted to increasing the knowledge and technology of the communications field, just for the desire to do so without compensation of any kind. Amateur radio operators can be found in almost every country in the world and range in all ages, skill levels, and occupations. Amateur radio equipment can range from the do-it-yourself projects consisting of only a few dollars to state-of-the-art satellites costing many hundreds of thousands of dollars. Amateur radio operators keep in touch using CW, Morse code, computers, packet, RTTY, and other digital modes, video, and voice, AM, single sideband, and FM. Amateur radio is not a commercial service. Radio operators cannot receive numeration in any form, Services are provided on a purely voluntary basis for the benefit of the community as a whole. Our guest for this program is Mark Gaunt, and his call sign is KG7CX. Welcome, Mark. Thank you, sir. Um, before we get into our discussion, can you tell me a bit what an amateur radio call sign is? Uh, the amateur radio call sign is a, a distinguishing, uh, identifying uh, a name or, or a label, perhaps, uh, for all licensed amateurs. Uh, it uh, is assigned by the Federal Communications Commission in Washington, and it is an um, individual uh, call that's assigned to one person, one person only, uh, such as your, your license plate of your vehicle, uh, your, your house number, your social security number but it, uh, it's a radio identifying number for each, uh, each person. Hmm. And can you tell me a little bit about <coughs> yourself and what got you interested in amateur radio? Boy, as, as long as I can I remember, as far back as I can remember, I've been interested in radios. As a little kid, I was always poking my fingers around in the radio sets and getting shocked and zapped and, <laughs> and ruining radios. Uh, that goes way back. It uh, took a bit of a back seat uh, when my family was growing up and, and uh, I was working, uh, changing jobs and moving around the countryside. Finally, when life settled down a little bit, when the kids grew up and uh, the bills uh, were diminished a bit, uh, I was able to get back into it. I've been into it about five years now in this, this last time. I also <coughs> understand that you are the president of the local amateur radio club. Can you tell me about the club and what the club's functions and goals are? That's the Clark County Amateur Radio Club. Mm -hmm and the club is over 60 years old. It started out uh, about 1930 as the Vancouver Amateur Radio Club, and then as the, uh, as the city and the county grew, in, uh, both in area and in population, they realized that uh, many of their members were from outside of the city limits. So uh, I'm not sure exactly when, but somewhere a number of years ago, it, it was decided that, the, that it would become the Clark County Amateur Radio Club, uh, that's as it is today. Uh, the club is... Uh, it has a number of, of interests and goals. Uh, the, the obvious one is the pursuit of, of, of uh, the enjoyment of amateur radio and uh, developing technology in, in radio. Uh, we're very strongly into uh, community service. We're associated with the uh, Department of Emergency Services here in town. Uh, work with them closely, uh, with the fire departments, police departments, uh, the hospitals, and the Red Cross as well. Uh, I, I consider that the bread and butter of amateur radio that um, gives us a, a real reason for being, uh, the recreational aspect aside, that gives us something serious in which to, to sink our teeth into and a purpose. And it's also an extremely uh, valuable help to, to the community and to the, the municipal, the municipal uh, s systems uh, as far as supplementing and uh, uh, enlarging the, uh, the area's uh, radio and communications uh, system. <clears throat> well, speaking of community service, I understand that the club provided assistance during the March of Dimes Walk America held recently here in Vancouver. We have a clip from this event. Uh, roll clip, please. Good morning. This is Brent Fraunfelder for the Clark County Amateur Radio Club. Club's call sign is W7AIA. Um, 
Uh, my call sign is N7QFR today. The Clark Kent Amateur Radio Club is helping out with a March of Dimes 10K walkathon. Uh, we're out here today to give radio support for um, uh, walkers who will be uh, out here today taking a, uh, uh, an extensive course um, starting here at Marine Park, um, going all the way up here to Interstate 5, uh, over to, I believe it'll be over here in McLaughlin. Uh, it'll be quite extensive. The, the race will, will start here and it'll end here. Now I'm here at the uh, Clark County Amateur Radio Club command post here. Um, you can see the uh, big trailer here, and um, Dave will uh, be our command post person here. Uh, got a couple of ham operators here in the background, Mr. George Milner, uh, N7OTW, Ms. Jennifer Woods, KC7ABK, Brian, a couple other people here in the trailer being briefed right now. Uh, looks like pretty nice weather, and we're hoping for a good day. So. Coming down now, Mark, out there? No, just barely drizzling. I'm starting to rain. Yeah, I know. Oh, man. Did the checkpoints get umbrellas? I wasn't a very nice little bird right out of the van. Okay. It's always good. Just open the Hello, my name's Dave, and I'm an amateur radio operator. Uh, this morning, I'll be the net control operator for the Vancouver March of Dimes Walkathon. We're sitting in a, a travel trailer that we're using as a communication center. We've got a uh, amateur radio behind us here with an antenna on the roof uh, with which we'll be able to communicate with all of our operators throughout the area. We've got an area that covers probably uh, five or so square miles that we have seven checkpoints set up and we will have radio operators at each of those checkpoints. We also have uh, a couple of rover operators who can shuttle supplies and or information around as necessary. Uh, at this point we are the only communications uh, for the event and uh, should work pretty well. At the moment. Okay, well, I'm going to try to do a roll call in about 10 minutes or so. Uh, so if you can hook up uh, with everybody then that would be good. Okay, we'll see what you can do. Thank you, sir. W7EIA. Okay, W7EIA. Okay, What was the club asked to do for the event? Uh, they asked us to provide uh, communications between their headquarters, uh, which was down at the start-finish line, and the various checkpoints. There were six along the route. And uh, the, uh, each checkpoint was to relay or feed back to uh, the headquarters, or our net control, as we called it, uh, information concerning uh, the progress of the, of the runners' walkers as they passed each point. How they, how they were progressing. Were they clear at one point? Where were they in the route? Uh, it was uh, a logistical and a safety uh, thing as well. We did uh, have a, an amateur radio operator in a vehicle or two with the uh, logistics crew uh, providing, uh, helping them uh, distribute uh, drinks and beverages and what have you to the various points as they ran out. So it was a bit of a supply, safety, and uh, coordination uh, objective. Is there anything else you'd like to tell me about the club? Well, let's see. I've mentioned the uh, emergency services uh, aspect of it. Uh, we do try to get involved with as uh, many uh, community events as we can. Uh, a couple of years ago when the uh, Columbia River uh, Foundation had the Columbia River Bicentennial, we set up a station down at the uh, forestry center, the visitor center down at uh, the Fort area. and. Um, got on the air there with what we call a special event station that uh, enabled us to talk to other amateur radio stations around the country and publicize uh, the Columbia um, River Bicentennial event. We also get involved with the uh, Evergreen Airport fly-in over the last three years. Again, a special event station. Uh, we will set up at malls. We just completed a, an afternoon at uh, the Town Plaza. Uh, it was an exhibit, uh, set up a radio, and uh, had various, uh, had a tape going as a matter of fact. And, Handouts, and we're there just available to, for the public to uh, to uh, demonstrate what amateur radio is about. Great. Well, thank you for taking the time to talk on our program today, and I look forward to seeing you again in the future. Thank you, sir. Welcome to the third section of Ham News. I'm Clint Wells, N7XKJ. The most common forms of amateur radio come in the form of a small package called the HT, or handheld transceiver. 
These radios generally operate in the two meter band. I will now demonstrate what is called simplex, which is transmitting and receiving on the same frequency. This is N7XKJ looking for a demonstration. N7XKJ, N7XKK. N7XKK, N7XKJ, I'm doing a demonstration for a cable access program. Uh, how is my signal coming in? Your signal is just fine. Five by nine, no problems, no static. Thank you much. You're, uh, you're coming in perfectly as well, for full quieting. Uh, thank you for your help. Not a problem. N7XKK offline. N7XKJ is clear. Radio operators can communicate directly as we just did there to each other or expand their range via the use of a repeater. A repeater receives a transmission from a small low powered handheld like this and retransmits that signal at a higher output. This means that someone with one of these low power HTs can communicate with someone else through the repeater at a very extended distance. I'll now demonstrate a repeater to you. I'll be now transmitting on one frequency and actually receiving on another, as the display will show. This is N7XKJ looking for a demonstration. This is N7XKJ looking for a demonstration. N7YSQ, N7XKJ, I'm doing a demonstration for a cable, Columbia Cable Access Program here in Vancouver. Uh, how is my signal coming in today? Right now, you're, uh, you have a little white noise on it, but uh, um, perfectly copyable. Um, I'm out here in Gresham. I'm running approximately five watts from a mobile. Um, and I have a, I'm stationary right now, but I do have a mobile rig. I well, appreciate your help there. Uh, you're coming in perfectly clear here, and uh, we're uh, here in the uh, cable access studios, as I was referring to earlier in uh, Vancouver, Washington. Uh, we appreciate your help. Uh, this is N7XKJ, and I will be clear. Each amateur station is as different as the operator. These shacks, as they are called, are a unique reflection on the operator who created them. This is how one operator set up his portable station. Okay, when I went out looking for a, an RV, why I wanted to find something that I could mount some ham radio equipment in because I knew that in the Pacific Northwest, when we're off trying to relax and enjoy ourselves, we can't always do outdoor things. So uh, when it's too nasty weather to go fishing, or it's late in the evening, or, or whatever else, why well, it's often appropriate to uh, take this hobby with you. So I've uh, mounted an HF radio and a UHF radio, two meter radio, in the, this cabinet in the corner. And uh, I can take them in and out quite easily so that I can bring them when I go to go. And uh, I have packet capability with a TNC I've mounted under the two meter radio on a laptop computer. It seems like just about everywhere I've gone, I've been able to connect with uh, some sort of a packet station or bulletin board down on the coast, uh, Eastern Oregon. It doesn't seem to matter where you are, it's not that far away to it. Of course, I have some antennas mounted, mobile antennas on the outside that I can hook these radios up to. Um, so when we're kind of relaxing and my wife's doing her her knitting and uh, reading and things like that why I can don a pair of earphones and I can sit here and uh, literally talk around the world uh, also um, I have a generator that I can uh, take with me and uh, or could just use here at home in case there was a problem and and everything else uh, didn't work why this could be used for emergency purposes quite easily Here's what's happening. Clark County Amateur Radio Club meeting for July will be on the 1st at the Bagley Center in Vancouver from 7.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. All are invited to attend.
Our County Amateur Radio Club meeting for August will be a picnic in Marine Park in Vancouver at noon on the 7th. All are invited to attend. For information on the Clark County Amateur Radio Club, please call 206-896-8909.